Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's again a joy even to meet you through this time of meditation. Even today we'll be looking at chapter 13 of the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, this is a chapter of parables. There are almost eight parables that are recorded in this chapter. The first parable is the parable of the sower and the next one is the parable of the wheat and tares. Both are almost similar parables with some slight distinctions. And then there are many short parables. Uh, the parable of the mustard seed, which is almost only just two verses, and then the parable of the leaven, um, which is just one verse, and then a uh, parable of hidden treasures, parable of pearl with a great price, parable of dragnet, and then the parable of the householder who brings out the treasures. So these are the eight parables uh, that are mentioned. If you have your English Bibles, the eighth parable doesn't have a title. Uh, in the, in for the sake of the title, there are only seven parables. But if you look at verse number 52, that itself in itself uh, is a parable. So uh, so we will we will study this particular chapter even today. So verse 1 of chapter 13 of the Gospel of Matthew begins like this. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house. You know, where we ended, when we ended in chapter 12, we find uh, Jesus in a house and his uh, brother and mother, brothers and mother were standing outside. If you look at chapter 12 and verse 46, you will find the brother of Jesus and the mother of Jesus standing outside and trying to speak with the Lord. And then uh, Christ himself saying that, uh, who is my mother and who are my brothers? The one who whoever does the will of my father are my mother and my uh, brother. So he from there, he goes out of his house. Uh, so you, you can see this, this events almost coming in a chronological order. So he is coming out and he goes out to the sea and he sat by the sea. It's almost like sitting at the seashore. And when he sat at the shore, verse 2 says, multitudes were gathered together with him. So he got into a boat and he sat. Uh, so he gets into a boat. Uh, and he sits and the whole multitude stand on st stood on the shore and they stand on the shore while Jesus usually today we can see a preacher standing and preaching and uh, the crowd sitting but there it was vice versa uh, the preacher was sitting and uh, hearers the listeners were standing and then it is from here he begins um, this series of parables this series of parables and it starts from verse 3 to verse 52 so the it continuously it comes as parables in the middle there are some um, there are some uh, questions asked by the disciples and uh, some <coughs> some discussions happen uh, but uh, usually the more content 90 percent of the content here uh, it's christ himself speaking christ himself speaking so uh, in verse 3 we can see he spoke many things to them in parables so uh, when he was speaking to them in parables the disciples asked them a question asked uh, christ a question look at verse 10 why do you speak in parables why do you speak in parables uh, if you if you read it again in verse 34 of the same chapter you will find these find these words all these things jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables and without a parable he did not speak to them. So uh, Jesus kept on speaking to them in parables. You know, when we read through the Gospels, all the four Gospels, we can find all the teachings of Christ were given to them in parables. Uh, what are parables? Parables are earthly stories with heavenly meanings, earthly stories with divine meanings. That's what uh, parables, uh, parables uh, are all about. Uh, so today, uh, even before we get into these eight parables, I just want to give to you uh, why Jesus used parables and what was the importance of uh, parables. I'm going to read to you a few points which are mentioned uh, in the Dake's Bible. So as I told you, even for this meditation, I'm not using any commentary or anything. I'm just uh, using two Bibles. One is the regular NKJV Bible and uh, the Dake's NKJV Bible. These are the two Bibles uh, that I am that I'm using. I'm a regular uh, New American Standard Bible reader, NASB reader, but uh, for these meditations, uh, I switched to NKJV because I understand that uh, there are not many who, who use NASB. So for their sake, uh, for the general universal sake, I'm, I've shifted to NKJV, but otherwise I'm very comfortable uh, with New American Standard Bible and also uh, with NKJV. It's good. It's good. Uh, uh, so we know we know these are the these are the two standard versions that you can always rely upon. And I don't rely on much of the other versions. I read the other versions like the Message Bible, 
the new living translation the contemporary english version i read all of them but when it comes to word study i go to uh, these two versions the nasb and the nkjv <coughs> so today uh, even now uh, this this dakes bible it's a wonderful bible if you get an opportunity to uh, uh, to to buy this dakes bible it's a good bible so so there they have given some points on why jesus used parables or what uh, what is the importance of parables uh, the reason why jesus was using these parables again and again so there are many points here almost 17 points i'm not going to read all 17 uh, but why because we will we will we'll meditate on a lot of parables in the coming days and also when we go to the other gospels and we also would have meditated many parables even before now uh, the first thing is they illustrate truth they reveal truth and they make it clear in comparison with something else which is some uh, something that is uh, very familiar why jesus used uh, parables it reveals truth it illustrates truth and it makes it clear uh, when it compares with somebody uh, which is already very familiar. Secondly, uh, uh, speaking in parables creates more interest. It creates more interest. Uh, uh, thirdly, it makes known uh, new truths to interested hearers. And uh, the next point is they impart instruction and rebuke without causing offense. Uh, it's almost like you're, you're conveying the message in a story. So it imparts instruction and rebuke without creating any offense and the next one is it creates interest and hunger for further information you know when you tell something like a parable it creates uh, more interest and hunger so that they could listen to it uh, listen to it more and the next one is what i really like it makes known mysteries by comparison with things already known it makes known mysteries uh, when when you compare it with with, with other things and um, um and then the next one is this is something that i really found interesting it says their words and details must be defined literally and not spiritually uh for example when uh, when when we when we meditate the parable so we it, it will since it will begin like this a sower went out to sow so when you imagine that you literally you literally need to imagine that a farmer is going out to sow some seeds so that's what it says the words and details must be defined uh, literally and uh, not just uh, spiritually and then uh, the, the 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 next few points i really like it it says it says like this it conceals truth from disinterested hearers it uh, it conceals truth from disinterested hearers and it adds truth to those who love it it takes away truth from those who hate it and then the final point why jesus used prophecy is this uh, it was fulfilling a prophecy it was fulfilling a prophecy when you read uh, the gospel of matthew chapter 13 uh, when jesus was speaking uh, 34 it says without a parable he did not speak to them and then verse 35 it says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open my mouth in parables i will open my mouth in parables i will utter utter things kept from the foundation of the world so this is something um, uh, which is also a prophecy that is uh, that is fulfilled now so this is the background of of why jesus used uh, parables uh, it is basically revealing a hidden mystery a secret to the hearers in comparison uh, with something that is very familiar for the hearers so uh, let's begin with the parable of the sower i'm sure that you all would have heard uh, uh hundreds of messages on it so it talks about a man who went out to sow and he sowed in four different places uh, first it fell by the roadside second some seeds fell by the stony places and third uh, it fell among the thorns and then it fell on the good ground so those which fell on the good ground uh it gives a harvest of uh, 100 fold, uh, 60 fold and 30 fold. Uh, but then those which fell on the other three areas, for example, those which fell on the wayside, birds came and picked it. And Jesus uh, compares, compares it with the devil, uh, with Satan, the wicked one who comes and snatches away the word of God. Look at verse 19. Everyone who hears the word of the kingdom does not understand it. They hear it. There are many people who listen to it, but they do not understand it. And that's when the evil one, the wicked 
wicked one, uh, the devil comes and uh, snatches it away. Then some fell on stony places they are where they did not have much earth. They immediately sprang up, but because they had no depth of earth, the sun were, when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. So here it talks about uh, in verse 20 and 21, it talks about the people who received it uh, with great joy. Uh, but they did not have any root when tribulation this the the talking about the sun the talking about the stones they talk, uh, here jesus compares it um, with uh, with tribulation or persecution when it arises uh, they all stumble and the third one it fell among the thorns and when it fell among the thorns uh, the thorns also grew up and it choked them so here the thorns uh, uh, christ compares it if you look at verse 22 uh, he compares it to the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and they become unfruitful and he becomes unfruitful and uh, the the last group he hears the word he understands the word and he bears fruit and produces it so this is what uh, this is what is the parable of uh, sower and while as jesus was talking about this parable of sower uh, he says something from the book of isaiah if you if you read verse 14 15 uh, you will find jesus quote Isaiah chapter uh, 6 verse 9 and 10 it says like this hearing uh, they will hearing you will hear and shall not understand seeing you will see and not perceive they will hear it but they will not understand it they will see it but they will not perceive it uh, the hearts of the people have grown dull their heart their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed uh, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears but they don't understand with their hearts and uh, no, it's it's a it's a tragedy for people for people uh, who listen but they don't understand, and uh, we see this particular wordings uh, uh, recorded over different in different parts of the Bible. I'll just give you the references. I'm sure uh, reading it will be really nice, but then we wouldn't have that much time to read every passage of it. Um, this particular uh, hearing, they do, they hear, but they eat, they don't understand. They see, but they eat. Hearing, they hear, but they eat, they don't listen. Uh, they see, but they don't, uh, they see, but eat, they don't see. Uh, they are not unable to understand it or they do not want to understand it they do not want to see it they do not want to hear it uh, we see this in we see this in isaiah chapter 6 verses 9 and 10 we see it in ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 2 uh, we see it in mark 4 12 luke 8 10 john 12 40 acts 28 26 uh, romans 11 8 second uh, corinthians 3 14 and 15 john 3 36 and then uh, this continues even in psalm 119 and verse 70 zechariah 7 11 second timothy 4 4 hebrews 5 11 and uh, luke 19 42 so this is something this is this particular uh, theory of christ saying they are hearing but they don't uh, hear they see a see but they don't see uh, their heart is unable to understand they have hardened their hearts and their hearts have grown dull this is something uh, this was a great burden, not just of, by what uh, we see from Christ, uh, but we can see uh, all throughout different authors of the Bible, from Apostle Paul to David to Mark to Luke to John. Uh, we can see uh, literally everybody talking about the same thing and how people hear. It's very important that we are not just hearers, but we also take time to understand them and try to apply it to them. We cannot harden our hearts. We cannot just harden our hearts and uh, just leave it, uh, leave it to them. Let me just read to you one verse from it. Uh, it it's from the it's it's from the book of Sakaraya, book from Sakaraya, uh, chapter uh, chapter seven and verse eleven. Let me just read to you that one particular verse because uh, we we see it everywhere. But I thought uh, <clears throat> we will read just we will read it um, because this is beautiful. Sakaraya seven eleven. It says. Uh, I re I'll read it from the NKJ. It's beautiful here. It says they refuse to heed. They shrug their shoulders. They shrug their shoulders and stop their ears so that they could not hear. They refuse to pay attention. They turned a stubborn shoulder and they stopped their ears uh, from hearing. So this is how many times uh, people behave. This is how many times people behave. Yeah. So uh, so this is. This is where Jesus was talking about this parable of the sower and uh, as he was talking about uh, the parable of sower in verse 16 he says blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. So 
Yeah. So there is another group who also are ready to see, who are also ready to hear. And then uh, after this parable comes a parable of wheat and tear. So here, the in, the in this in the parable of sower, a man went out to sow, and uh, he was sowing in different places. He was sowing. He was sowing on the wayside. He was sowing um, on the thorny places. He uh, he he was sowing uh, on stony places. He was sowing everywhere, even on good ground. But this parable of wheat and tear. Here also another man goes out to sow, but this guy goes out to sow only on the good field he goes out to sow in the field look at verse 24 the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his feet in in his field and he sows the seed and he goes back and sleeps you know when when and while men slept the enemy comes and he also sows tares among the wheat you know just like how uh, men of god who labor in the kingdom of god there there are also uh, the sons of the kingdom of darkness even they come and sow and they were sowing um, the the tares the seeds of the tares and uh, finally when both started growing up look at verse 26 the grain had sprouted and also the the tares also appeared. So both both are coming back, coming out together. And then the servants, uh, when the men who sowed the good seed, they come to the owner and they say, uh, Lord, shall we you know, pluck out the tares? And that is when uh, the, the, the owner says, uh, just leave them, let them all grow together. And on the final day, on, on the harvest, um, let us look at verse 30 let us let let both grow together until the harvest at the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers you know later when this parable is explained uh, from verse 36 to 43 we will find the uh, we will find the comparisons uh, look at the one who sows the good seed is the son of man the field is the world the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom uh, <laughs> the the enemy who sowed them is the devil and those seeds the tares are the sons of the wicked one the harvest is the end of age and the reapers are angels so here in verse 30 when when when, when the owner says that uh, the i finally i'll ask the reapers to bind them and burn them and gather the wheat into the barn it means those reapers are the angels for on the final day when uh, when all the tares will be burnt uh, burnt in hell and the wheat is gathered in the barn in the kingdom of heaven so uh, so here we see and then uh, sometimes you know one of the things that i really understand from this parable is this sometimes we really worry why are the wicked sprouting why are the wicked living why are the wicked uh, flourishing why are they blessed you know sometimes god lets everybody grow together so that in the final day um, christ will christ will mark uh, a clear distinction of those who serve him and those who do not, of those who gather with him and those who scatter against him. So till then, Jesus Christ, uh, he gives an opportunity. He keeps on giving an opportunity, but, this, but at the same time, um, both the tares and the wheat grow together. And growing among tares is very difficult. Uh, they will be kicking you. Uh, they, will, they will be poking you. There will be a lot of struggles, but then uh, when the wheat, when the harvest comes, that is when we will find the the weeds stored and considered precious in the barn, while the tares are burned together or tormented in the in the fire of hell. So, uh, so after talking about uh, talking about all this, uh, finally, then after these are the two big parables uh, in this particular. Um, in this particular chapter and after that there are there are many uh, series of small parables and the first of the, the small parable is the parable of the mustard seed um, and this parable of the mustard seed and the parable of leaven that is the parable of mustard seed in verse 31 and 32 and the parable of leaven in verse 33 is almost very similar uh, in the in the moral meaning <coughs> Let's look at the parallel of the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed on his field. It was the least of all the seeds in the Jewish culture. For anything small, you know, they will go, they will, they will call it as a mustard. For everything small, they will call it as a mustard. Uh, so, uh, least of the seeds, but when it is grown, um, it, uh, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches it is almost uh, it is it, it, it almost talks about the small beginnings 
the in 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 tamil we use the word arpamana arambam the small beginnings do not despise the day of small beginning it is very small indeed it is it is um, it, it it almost it is almost like irrecognizable it it it, it almost seems nothing but when it is sowed when it is when it grows up it gives you a very big harvest it becomes a big harvest uh, the, the in such an extent that even it becomes a nesting place for all the birds of the year look at the next parable the parable of the leaven again it is the same thing the the the, the kingdom of heaven is like a leaven which a woman took and hid and uh, hid it in a meal till it was all leaven so it talks about some leaven um, which is hid in a meal and then that little e leaven it makes the whole uh, meal uh, completely leaven so this particular leaven uh, in many places it is used in a negative sense for example when you read first corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 to 8 it talks about the leaven is compared to sin you can see that even in galatians 5 9 leaven is compared to sin look at uh, matthew chapter 16 verses 6 to 12 here uh, the leaven is compared to false doctrines and uh, and uh, and again in luke chapter 12 and verse 1 there we can see that leaven is compared uh, to hypocrisy many times when christ was talking about leaven he was talking about uh, the the leaven of the pharisees and sadducees but in this uh, particular case the leaven is talked in a very positive way the leaven is compared to the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven is like a leaven so what does this leaven do what does this leaven do first of all we need to know leaven it, it has a very small beginning but it will increase yeast is uh, leaven is nothing but yeast yeast is microscopic in size and a little is needed to spoil the entire dough it little is needed very little is needed uh, so first of all it has a very small beginning second uh, uh, even though it has a small beginning, it exerts its influence from within. Now, the influence is not from outside, but from within. The church has to influence the world and the world cannot influence the church. The, the work begins from inside and it spreads out. It yeast makes the dough rise from within. It's not an exterior agent. You, you soak the yeast in the dough and you just leave it for a day. And the work starts from, from, from within it, within it. See, the gospel has to influence the culture and not the culture influencing the gospel it's not the other way around we need to influence the culture and and uh, the third the, the third important thing is it works in, invisibly it works invisibly uh, but the effect is evident to all it's the work is invisible in such a way that not many can see it but the effect of it it is seen by everybody it is seen by everybody and uh, the final the fourth one that i want to talk about this yeast is this uh, it it the the nature of the yeast is to grow and to and to change whatever it comes in contact with so whatever comes in contact with this uh, leaven with this yeast it will uh, it will change its uh, it change its course so that's how the kingdom of heaven is whatever comes in context with the kingdom of heaven it will change its course so the first the kingdom of heaven is compared to a mustard seed next the kingdom of heaven is compared to a leaven and as you continue you will find uh, in verse 44 the kingdom of heaven is compared to a hidden treasure where a man when he found a treasure hidden in a field he he sells everything that he has and he buys the field so that he says i value this treasure more than all the wealth that i ever had you know something that that's how uh, we need to do and the next one is the very similar parable to the hidden treasure the parable of of a pearl a merchant was seeking a beautiful parables beautiful pearls and when he had found one pearl with a great price he sold all that he had and he brought and he bought that one parable and finally the parable of dragnet this parable of a fishnet or dragnet is very similar to the parable of the wheat and test it talks about a fisherman who threw his net into the sea and uh, they gathered lots of fish um, and uh, they 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 bought the fish and then they separated the good ones and the good ones and the bad ones and the bad ones they threw away and they gathered the good ones into vessels. And here, verse 49, Christ says, that's how it will be on the end of age. Very similar to the parable of the wheat and tares, where uh, Christ let the wheat and the tares grow together. Here, the, both the good and the bad fishes were caught, uh, every kind of fishes. And finally, on the end of age, the angels will come and separate the good from the bad, the wicked from the just and the bad ones will be thrown off into the fiery furnace the furnace of fire there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth um, 
So these are the seven parables. At the end of the seven parables, Jesus steps into the eighth parable uh, where he says, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder. The parable of the householder is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things old and new. Things old and new. This things old and new is a Jewish idiom for plenty. Uh, for plenty. So here, he, here, uh, when you, when you, uh, a very similar verse to this particular verse is, you will find us find in Song of Solomon, uh, chapter seven and verse thirteen. When you read it, uh, uh, it says like this: "The mandrakes give off a fragrance, and at our gates and pleasant fruits, all manner new and old, which I have laid up for you, beloved." So, uh, I, I, when I was reading this verse. That the householder who brings out his treasure, things new and old. I was this. I was comparing this householder to a Bible teacher or to a preacher, and this things new and old. I was thinking of the New Testament, and the Old Testament. There are some people who will only preach from the New Testament. There are some who will preach only from the Old Testament, and some people they value only the Old Testament. Some value only the New Testament. But here we see. Uh, here we see about the scribe who values both the new and the old. He brings out both the New Testament and the Old Testament. So after Jesus finishing, finished all these parables, in verse 33, it says he departed from there and he came out to his own country. And uh, look at verse 54. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue. And uh, there he was teaching there. But what he taught in synagogue is not recorded here. And when, when people saw that, they were astonished. And they said, where did this man get this, this, this wisdom and this mighty miracles and they say you see not a carpenter is, is this not the carpenter's son is this uh, it's not his mother mary and we, we can also see the names of the brothers of jesus mentioned here this is the first time in the gospel where we see Jesus. the names of jesus's family is mentioned here his brothers james joseph simon and uh, judas so maybe uh, the father's name is not mentioned here. maybe joseph would have passed away we do not know. So we can see, you know, Judas is the short form. Is the is the is the is the short form of Judas is Jude, the the man, the half brother of Jesus who wrote the book of Jude, and James is again the uh, the person who wrote the book of James uh, later um, in the at the end of the New Testament. So. And well, look at verse fifty verse fifty six. And even his sisters are there. So even Jesus had sisters. So there, there were Jesus, and then the names of four brothers and also sisters are there. And uh, verse fifty seven, they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, "A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, in his own house." In other words, he says, "A prophet is not respected in his own house." And uh, the verse fifty eight is a very sad verse that he did not do mighty works there because of their unbelief. So Jesus couldn't do much where. The, because these people could not uh, believe him. So this chapter 13 is a wonderful ch wonderful chapter with, uh, with a lot of uh, prophetical reminders, uh, why parables and also uh, eight parables and a lot of life lessons from these parables and how uh, Jesus was rejected even at his hometown Nazareth. Dearly beloved, this is a very wonderful chapter, eight parables, things that we can really learn we can really apply into our lives. I hope that uh, even as you listen, you will spend more time even uh, studying this particular chapter. May God bless you. Stay blessed. Amen. Amen.